Unit 4. Popular Science. Exercise 1. How to Grow Chives. Listen to the conversation and write down the missing information in the notes below. Hi, David. Do you like chives? Yes, I like them very much. They taste like onions. You can sprinkle fresh chives on cooked chicken, fish, or potatoes. It's very delicious with them. Do you know how to grow them? No, I just buy them when I need them. Do you know how to grow them? Yes, I grow a lot in my garden. Chives are easy to grow. Really? Please tell me how you grow them. I want to plant some in my garden. Okay. You need a bag of potting soil, chive seeds, and a pot with a hole in the bottom. Oh, wait a minute. I need a pen to write this down. I need a bag of potting soil, chive seeds, and a pot with a hole in the bottom. Is that right? Yes. Then what do I do? First, fill the pot with potting soil. Don't use soil from your garden. Second, water the soil well. Water should come out of the hole in the pot. Then, sprinkle about 10 to 15 seeds on top of the soil. Cover the seeds with a little potting soil. Water lightly. I see. I have to water them a little bit as soon as I plant them. Yes. Then, put the pot near a sunny window. Do not let the soil dry out. The chives will come up in about two weeks. So, in two weeks' time, chives will grow. That's right. You can start to cut the chives when they are about 8 centimeters or about 3 inches tall. Cut only about one-third of the plant at one time. Why do you cut only one-third of the plant at one time? Because in this way, the chives will keep growing. Ah, I understand. Can I grow them in the garden? Yes, of course. You can plant chives outside. You can grow chives outside in a sunny place. When should I plant? Plant the seeds in early spring. Chives are perennials. They will come up every year. It sounds good. I will try it this spring. Exercise 2. Who invented popcorn? Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Mary and her classmate Alex are off from school. They are going to see a film. Do you have the time, Alex? It's 7.20. We are early. The film starts at 7.30. Let's have something to drink. That's a good idea. Something smells good. Right. That's popcorn. Would you like some popcorn? Yes, I'd love some. Do you know who invented popcorn? It is said that popcorn is a delicacy that was developed by the Indians of North America. When did they invent it? Mm, it has been dated back thousands of years. I see. Do you know that the Indians were not only eating popped corn, but they also used popped corn in headdresses, necklaces, and in religious ceremonies? Yes, we have seen these in some films, and according to most sources, a deerskin bag full of popcorn was served at the first Thanksgiving dinner at Plymouth Rock in 1621. You know, popcorn's popularity grew during the Depression of the 1930s, when people realized that a little popcorn could go a long way. But its success was clinched when movie theaters across the continent started serving the snack. By 1947, 85% of movie houses were selling popcorn at their concession stands. Oh! The movie is about to start. Let's go. Exercise 3. Lobsters. Listen to the talk 
and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Good morning, everyone. Today, I will talk about lobsters. Many of our listeners wrote to me to ask if lobsters really scream when they are boiled and why they turn red when they are cooked. These are very good questions. Well, let me ask you a question. If you were sitting in a vat of boiling water, wouldn't you scream and turn red too? But in the lobster's case, there is no scream, and there is a chemical reason for the change in color. Noises are produced as a lobster is boiled alive, but the sounds are not voices. As the lobster's body heats up in the shell, pockets of air in the cavities and joints expand. If enough pressure builds inside the body, the air will make whistle-like sounds as it escapes through small openings in the shell. As for the color shift, a lobster's shell contains red pigment molecules that combine with a protein to create the camouflaging colors of the lobster. Live lobsters are usually blue-green or brown with flecks of yellow. When the lobster is boiled, the protein is denatured or deformed by the heat. The pigment remains, however, turning the shell red. Exercise 4. Jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Hi, Alan. Look at this picture. Do you know this bridge? Let me see. Oh, it's the Golden Gate Bridge. Do you know how many people have killed themselves by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge? I don't know. Here is the report on that. It said people began jumping off San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge almost as soon as it was completed in 1937. Between 1937 and 1990, 850 people have jumped from the bridge to their deaths. 850? That's quite a lot. In an average year, 17 people will take the plunge. Yes. This figure is based largely on the number of people actually seen jumping off the bridge and the number of bodies recovered. In some cases, a number is added to the official tally if a suicide note or other evidence is found, but only after thorough investigation. There have been a number of faked jumps by people attempting to escape the law. Why is the bridge a popular spot for those serious about their suicidal intentions? Because the Golden Gate Bridge is easily accessible and the long drop ensures a low chance of survival, impact with the water after the 91-meter drop is like hitting a concrete wall at 140 kilometers an hour. I see. Are there any suicidal people that have failed? Only 17 suicide attempts in the bridge's history have failed. I see. Exercise 5. Where do ants go in winter? Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Hi, Tom. Come here. See what I found. What's up? There are thousands of ants here. Yes, I think they are busy taking food home for winter. It's amazing. Do you know where they go in winter? Yes, I've just read an article in the newspaper. When winter comes, ants move deep into their nests, where food has been collected. They store it in their special chamber all summer. How far underground is their storehouse? 
Only the top few inches of topsoil freeze. Beneath this layer of frozen soil, life goes on in the colony. How big is their nest? The size of their nest varies from just one chamber of a few inches in diameter to vast networks. It can extend 40 feet underground and house a population of up to 10 million ants. 10 million? That's quite a lot. Yes. You know, in North America, an ant community can consist of 12 or more main nests connected by tunnels. The entire colony can cover an area the size of a tennis court. So when spring comes, the ants have to work their way out of the nests and begin the task of gathering food for the next winter. Yes, you are right. They have to do just that. It's fascinating, isn't it? Exercise 6. How Crossword Puzzles Are Created Shirley and Chris are on the train. Listen to their conversation and fill in the missing information in the notes below. Chris, do you have the time? Yes, it's 4.15 now. How long does it take us to get to Edinburgh? I see there is still an hour to go. We will get there at 5.20. I see. What shall we do to kill the time? Shall we play a crossword puzzle? Okay. That's a good idea. Oh, Chris. Yes? Do you know who invented the crossword puzzle and how crossword puzzles are created? Well, the crossword puzzle was introduced in the Sunday supplement of the New York World newspaper in 1913. It was designed by Arthur Wynne. Mr. Wynne was inspired by Magic Square, a children's word game in which words are arranged vertically and horizontally. Wayne added empty squares and some clues. So that the player can deduce the words according to the clues. Yes. By the early 1920s, Crossword puzzles were standard features of almost every American newspaper. Yes, according to a report, many crossword puzzle books have been published since then. In 1924, four crossword puzzle books were on the bestseller lists. Booksellers also experienced phenomenal sales of another type of book, dictionaries. Today, Crossword puzzle makers each have their own techniques to challenge the skills of their players. Right. I know Eugene Waleska is a creator of the New York Times crossword puzzle. He begins with a theme and lists as many words as he can think of that loosely fit the theme. Yes. Birds, for example, might prompt pigeon toad, goose step, and turkey trot. Then Waleska starts to fill in the grid with the long words first, avoiding words ending in J or beginning with X. He works first in the lower right corner of the grid, since it is harder to find a word that ends with a certain letter. Waleska says that when he started in this business, it took him several days to fit the words into a 15 by 15 square grid. Now it takes less than an hour. Let's play it and see how well we do.